My name is Neil Malik. I'm from Knack Training, and today's tutorial is about Adobe InDesign, specifically a tool called Object Styles. Coming up in March is the IAAP Tech 17 conference in Tucson, Arizona, and one of my sessions is about using Adobe Photoshop and Adobe InDesign together to create things like handouts, brochures, pamphlets, etc. So one of the skills we'll be talking about in that session is something called an object style. Now, from what you can see on the screen right now, it should be relatively easy to understand that this photograph right here needs to be intermixed with the text. I want the text to wrap around it as opposed to what's happening right now where the text is just passing behind it. Now, I could click directly onto this picture, what InDesign considers to be an object, and I could use the object menu up at the top of the screen to do a lot of things here, to uh, change the text wrap, to um, change drop shadows and things like that. But I don't do that because I find myself reusing these ideas, the text wrapping, the drop shadows, the stroke around the outside, etc over and over and over again on picture after picture after picture. And so it's for that reason that I go over here to the panel on the right hand side and I look at what's called the object style. Now if you don't have the object style on your panel, go to the window menu, go down to styles, and make sure that your object styles window is open. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new object style that sort of controls how I want all of my photos to be dealt with. To do this, I go to the object styles panel, click the little piece of paper with a corner folded over at the bottom, that is create new style. And then I go here to where it says object style one. And I need to double click on this in order to name it something like uh, let's call this inline photos. And the reason I'm calling it inline photos is because I want this to have text wrapped around it. I don't want it to be the full width. I don't want there to be a break in my text. And so I consider that to be in line with the rest of the content. Now I go to this and I double click on it and it opens up a panel that allows me to change its name and also change aesthetic things about the way it's dealt with. Now, I don't want to fill the picture in with anything. I don't want to put a border around the outside. But what I do want to do right down here is text wrap. So I click on the entry for text wrap, and I see that currently it's not set to do any text wrapping at all. What I want is text wrap around the bounding box, which is the box around this picture. So I'll click on that. And now you can see that the offset between the picture and the text is is zero. It's zero points, zero pike, it's zero everything. So what I'm going to do is very simply here, just go in and change the top margin to one, and that will automatically change the margins around the rest of the entries. Now, over here on the left, I'm going to hit the drop shadow checkbox, and I'm going to put in a little drop shadow that maybe has 50% opacity or thereabouts, 51 is good enough, uh, maybe comes in from directly above, so I'll change that to 90 degrees, and it's at a distance of P6, and we'll talk more about what these dimensions mean later. So click OK, and you can see that it instantly changes this photo, and that's good, but the whole point of what I just did was to be able to apply this to other photos moving forward. So I'm going to scroll down, and let's say right about here, I need to drop in another photo. So I'll use Control D on my keyboard. That's one of my favorite keyboard shortcuts in InDesign. Go ahead and pick a picture to drop in. Let's say this one. And then click to drop it on the page. And then I'll just sort of scale this down a bit so that it will obviously fit well on the page. Okay, 
Now at this point, I want the text to wrap around this picture. I want there to be a drop shadow beneath it. And all I have to do is go to my object styles and click on inline photos, and it instantly handles this picture in the same way that it handled the earlier picture. And that is really the benefit of using your object styles. Not only that, but if I realize that my drop shadow is a little aggressive, I can just double click on inline photos here go to my drop shadow and say, you know what, maybe it should only be a 25 or a 30% opacity. Maybe it should only be offset three down and hit OK. And you can see that the two drop shadows are equivalent. They're the same size, they're the same opacity, and they were able to be changed simultaneously by just changing the style that I created.